Welcome back to The Bible is Art, where we explore the literary artistry of the Bible. And this week, we're going to talk about moving from literal things to metaphorical things and from metaphorical things to literal things. So it's a common literary technique to use physical things for metaphorical reasons. For instance, in Dante's Divine Comedy, Dante is on a physical journey from hell to heaven that's meant to be a metaphor for his spiritual journey. Or, in the Bible, Israel's physical wilderness wanderings for 40 years are meant to be metaphorical of their spiritual moral wanderings. So the idea is that you have some physical object or action that happens in a scene or to a character and it's also meant to be a metaphor for some non-physical thing. For instance, like a character trait or a theme. So a messy room could symbolize the messy mind of a character. But you can do the opposite, too. And that's where you start with a metaphor, and that becomes a physical, literal thing in the story. It's kind of hard to understand abstractly, so let me show you a few examples. I noticed this in two places in the Bible. The first is in the Gospels when Jesus heals a blind man. And the strange thing about this is that nowhere in the Old Testament does it say that the Messiah will heal blind people. In Isaiah 35, when God is talking about all the good things that are going to happen when he comes back, it says that the eyes of the blind will be opened. But that seems to be a metaphor. Why? Well, earlier in Isaiah, in chapter 6, when God is judging Israel, he says that Isaiah is to make the heart of this people dull and their eyes heavy and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. That is, the physical faculties of seeing and hearing are metaphors for moral and spiritual faculties, that is, moral hearing, spiritual seeing. So later in Isaiah, when God says that Israel is spiritually and morally blind, he's going to give them spiritual, moral eyes back, curing their blindness. But when Jesus comes, he unexpectedly opens physically blind eyes. The metaphor of blindness came first, and then the physical blindness. Another example of this is with the metaphor of a furnace. In Isaiah 48, God says that the exile, being exiled from the land, is like being in a furnace. That is, a fiery furnace is a metaphor for physical exile. But then... In the book of Daniel, when the Israelites are in exile, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are literally thrown into a fiery furnace. The metaphor came first and then the literal thing. So then the question is, why this literary technique? Like, what does it do? Well, I'm not sure, at least not sure of every reason, but I do know that it tells you something about the author and something about the text. First, it shows you the genius the author is capable of. For instance, Bach famously wrote a short phrase that represented his name and would sprinkle it throughout his work. It's called a musical cryptogram, and the phrase is this. If you want to learn more about this and the phenomenon of musical cryptograms, you can look at the great video uh, linked in the description. But this reverse metaphor technique demonstrates the literary virtuosity of the author, and the ultimate author here being God. That he can take imaginary things and make them real, making worlds with his mind and then hands. You see, if you go into a movie or start reading a book with a presupposition, someone telling you that it's dumb or adolescent, you're not going to give it very careful attention. 
But if you go in thinking that it's a work of high genius, you will attend to every detail, trying to understand how the parts relate to the whole and what the author is doing here and why he chose this phrase. Second, it shows us that the text is a deep and layered thing, that it surprises. And as much as you think you know how it's going to end or where the plot is going, you don't. See, under every metaphor, there might be a real thing. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video this week. Um, I'm really interested because I just uh, r realized this thing uh, about the text. And so if you have any other examples, I'd love to hear them um, and uh, just leave them in the comments below. Thanks.